What's up, Junior Youth Fam? How are you guys doing? Happy Sunday. Welcome to Junior Youth Sundays. I am Alicia Chinchilla. I am your host, and I am so pumped that you've joined us today. We are on week two of our Don't Get It Twisted series. Guys, last week was so awesome, and I can't wait to see what today has in store. So let's just kick it off. Michael, what you got for us? All right, hey guys. Uh, so, I don't know, a couple months ago, whatever, I watched uh, this TV show on Netflix and I got obsessed with chess. So, now what you guys are gonna watch me do is just destroy noobs on chess. You ready? All right, man, here we go. Okay, here we go. Boom. Let's see what you're gonna do there. What are you gonna do there? Okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. Oh, now we're making money moves. All right. What you gonna do? Dani Linares. Okay, he's from, uh, he's from España. Okay. Oh, now we're, now we're making moves here. Okay, boom. Let's do this. What's he gonna do, what's he gonna do? Take, boom. Hmm. Take. Right here. I can just exchange queens. You know, I'm up by two instead of one. Let's see what are you gonna do here, Danny? Danny. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, let's do that. Okay. Three pawn. Stuck now, aren't you, Danny? Come on, Danny. You see, guys, the reason why this guy is taking so long is because I have a triple attack. It's where I attack three of his pieces at the same time. So as you can see, I'm attacking this guy right here, I'm attacking this guy right here, and I'm attacking this guy right here. So it's a pretty nutso face time for him trying to figure out what to do. And maybe he's just trying to, you know, draw me out, make me lose a little bit of time, but he's gonna lose. There we go. First one of the day, resignation, come on. You guys, that would have been me, Danny. I would have forfeited. I suck at chess, but that was hilarious. Congratulations, Michael, well done. How are you in chess? Are you any good? Let us know. Anyways, now we're gonna enter into a time of worship. We got Shiloh, we got Connor. They're gonna lead us in some songs where we get to sing and praise our God of the universe. So let's worship him right now. He stands, no tongue 
can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin because a sinless Savior died my sinful soul is counted free for God the justice satisfied
2020 was a crazy year, wasn't it? I remember in January of 2020, I was hanging out with some students and we were having a conversation about what we were looking forward to for the year 2020. We were talking about maybe some goals that we had set, things that we were looking forward to, um, things that we thought might happen within the year. And I remember one of the students, he brought up to me that he was watching the news and he heard about this coronavirus that was starting to spread throughout different parts of the world. And I remember this student brought this up with great concern. And they said to me, they're like, Colin, what do you think about this? What do you think about the coronavirus? Do you think that we should be worried about this? And now for myself as someone that wasn't really as up to date with what was going on, I remember saying, no, there's nothing to worry about. Like, I mean, I don't really know everything that's going on, but I don't think there's anything that we should be worried about when it comes to the coronavirus. But then I remember a few other students piped up and they're like, yeah, Colin, like, what do you think? Like, is this something we should be worried about? Is this something that we should be praying for? And I'm like, yeah, you know, like definitely we could be praying for it. But here's the thing is that for me, I remember thinking that nothing was going to come from this. You know what I mean? Like really? Like, I mean, there's some stuff that was in the news and maybe people were just kind of hyping up something, but I didn't think that coronavirus was ever going to be a thing that was going to impact us here in Canada. So what happened was there was a couple months later where uh, Kelly and I, we went on a vacation. Kelly's my wife and uh, we decided to go to the States. And I remember it was uh, the beginning of March. And there was a couple of people that reached out to us and they said, hey guys, have you been watching the news? Aren't you worried about the coronavirus? Like, how do you feel about traveling? You guys need to be careful. And I remember thinking like, what are people talking about? Like, I don't get what people are talking about. I don't think this is a big deal. Like, why is everyone freaking out? And what happened was that we flew back uh, back home and we had to go get some groceries before we headed back to our place and I remember we went to the grocery store and then we went to Shoppers Drug Mart we were picking up some stuff and then when one of the things that we needed to pick up was toilet paper now lo and behold when we showed up at the toilet paper section there was none there and I remember just thinking like what the heck is happening right now like there's never been a time where I've never been able to buy toilet paper before and I mean it is essential. So I remember we went home and then, you know, we went into work and then all of a sudden the, you know, people started speaking more and more about what was happening with the coronavirus. And within a few weeks, we were facing a lockdown. And I remember thinking to myself, I completely misread the conditions. I completely got this news twisted. You know, for myself, I thought that, you know, if this was ever going to be a thing, it'd be something that would just blow over. But I have never been so wrong before in my life. I completely misinterpreted what was happening in the world around us. You know, sometimes in life we just get things wrong. We completely misread the conditions and we ultimately get things twisted. And what we're doing is we're continuing our series called Don't Get It Twisted. And specifically, we're talking about this idea of relationships. So what we're going to do is we're going to be jumping into a story from the Bible, Matthew chapter 9. There's these group of guys called Pharisees and they completely misread the conditions. When it comes to their experience of understanding who Jesus is, what Jesus was doing, what Jesus ought to do, they completely were wrong in thinking how Jesus should act, how he should interact with others. They completely misread the conditions and got Jesus completely wrong. So what we're going to do is we're reading Matthew chapter 9. We're reading from verses 9 to 13. So read along. If you have a Bible, you can get that out or you can follow along on the screen and we're going to just jump in and go with that. So yeah, let's jump in together. This is what it says starting at verse 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. All right, well, there's so much that's packed into this passage. But if you don't know who the Pharisees are, essentially, uh, for the Jews, the Pharisees, they were like these religious elite that were hanging out in their society. Uh, there were these guys that knew the law. There were these really like pious religious guys. And for them, you know, they were very self-righteous. And if we look throughout like the stories of the Gospels, uh, we come to understand that Jesus and the Pharisees, they end up clashing a lot. And this is one of those moments where Jesus and the Pharisees clash because they were judging Jesus for the people that he was spending time with. Because for these guys, they didn't want to be defiled. They felt that they didn't want to associate with people that were on the margins, such as sinners and tax collectors. Now, if you don't know what tax collectors are, tax collectors were these guys within this Jewish society that, we were, that they were seen as traitors. And the reason that they were seen as traitors is because they were under Roman rule at the time and these guys were tax collectors, so eventually, or essentially they were working for the Roman government. 
So what they would do is they'd collect taxes from the people, but they would also keep some extra money for themselves. So it was really slimy. These guys were people that just, they were just not liked amongst their community. And if anything, they were just people that people, generally speaking, did not want to associate with. So Jesus, he surprises these guys in a big way because that's exactly who Jesus chose to spend time with. Back when I was in junior high, I found life to be pretty difficult. I remember I felt really insecure. I always felt that I didn't have the nicest clothes. I always felt really self-conscious about my appearance. And I remember the question that I always had was, do I actually belong? Do people actually like me? And the thing about that was, since I was very insecure, I was very self-conscious about who I spent time with. Because the, the truth about it is because I remember there were certain classes where there was these group of guys, they were kind of like the popular guys at school, and I remember everyone was kind of on edge when they were around. Because every class, I always find that there was one student or one other person, one of my friends or someone that I knew that they chose to pick on. And I remember when that person got picked on, they got torn apart. And I remember it was brutal. These guys were ruthless with some of these kids. And I remember that instilled a strong sense of fear in my life. Not only did it make me feel even more insecure just about who I was, fun fact, my nickname was Beans for at least two years at school because students at school thought I looked like Beans from the show Even Stevens. You probably have never seen that show. But anyways, side note. I remember I just was always on edge wondering if I was gonna be the next target. So with that in mind, what would happen was is that I was starting to become very self-conscious about who I spent time with. You know, there was those kids at school and I was kind of one of them for a while. But there were those kids where like, you know, they were just a little bit different. Maybe they didn't always have the best appearance. They didn't have the nicest brand name clothes. And I remember those were the ones that usually sat alone at lunchtime and the ones that necessarily didn't have the most friends. I remember those were often the targets of the guys that were in my class. And I remember that there was a point in my life where I would stay clear from those people, not because I wanted to be mean to them, but because I wanted to protect myself. You know, I didn't want to spend time with those people because I knew that if I did, there was potential that all of a sudden the target that was on their back would all of a sudden be on mine. And I remember I would avoid them like the plague. I didn't want to be anywhere near them. But one of the things that I noticed as I started to follow Jesus and I started to learn more about Jesus and like the, the learning about the heart of Jesus and who Jesus loved and who Jesus spent time with, I took the moment to look at my life and realizing how much of a coward I really was being. Now, like looking back, I gotta give myself some grace because I understand the fact that, yeah, it's a scary thing when you're worried about being the target of bullying. But the thing is, is that when it comes to following Jesus, those people that we tend to avoid, the people that we're worried about affecting our reputation, the ones that maybe don't like the same things as us, maybe the things that are the people that have different interests as us, we'll avoid them. But in doing that, we're doing the exact opposite of what Jesus is calling us to do. You know, when I look back at my behavior, the way that I acted, the way that I had pushed certain people away or I would avoid certain people for the sake of my own reputation, there was so much of what I was doing that was very much like the Pharisees. And that's the very attitude that Jesus was calling out in this situation that we just read. And the whole purpose of why we're talking about this, why we're talking about relationships, why we're talking about how we don't want to get our relationships twisted is because we're wanting to get things in the right order. We're wanting to see things from the right perspective. And the thing that's amazing and beautiful is that when we get a relationship with Jesus right, we get our other relationships right as well. When we get things in line with Jesus and our relationship with him, it's gonna impact the way that we relate and see other people. Just like how we talked about last week, the, our relationship with Jesus, it's the very foundation of the relationships that we have in our lives. Because here's one of the beautiful things about Jesus. When we come to know and love Jesus, when we pursue our relationship with him, when we spend time in his word, when we spend time in prayer, we start to become more like him. You know, I don't know about you, but there's some people um, that I'll spend time with and like, you know, some of my close friends and I notice that they maybe they talk a certain way or they joke about certain things or we'll just like, just have certain memories together, these shared experiences. I find sometimes it could be either good or bad. The more time I spend with that person, the more I start to become like them. And it's kind of the same thing with Jesus. The more time that we spend with him, the more time that we're intentional about our relationship with him, the more that we become like him. And the thing that we have to remember from this is that when Jesus said that he came for the sick, when Jesus said that he came for the broken, when Jesus associated with tax collectors and sinners, our lives should start to look like this. And that's something that I'm challenged by all the time. I think about the people that I surround myself, the people that I spend time with. I have to think, how many of those people don't know Jesus? 
How many of those people are people that maybe think different than me, maybe like different things, maybe they talk different, maybe they're people that I wouldn't normally spend time with, but I'm being called to love them anyways. Because I think so often for us, when we think about loving people and this whole idea of God wanting us to love others, it's so easy for us to like people or to love people that enjoy doing the same things as us. That play the same, you know, maybe they play the same video games as us or maybe they eat the same food as us. Maybe they enjoy the same movies or maybe they have the same beliefs. It's really easy to love people like that. But it's really hard to love people that maybe, like we've talked about last week, that we consider to be our enemies. People that have maybe hurt us, maybe people that have betrayed us, maybe people that are just maybe hard people to love. There's a story of this lady named Mother Antonia Brenner. And I remember I heard her story a few years ago and I remember it was a story that really stuck out to me. Mother Antonia Brenner, she was a Catholic nun that grew up in the Hollywood area. She grew up around fame and a lot of wealth. And after a couple of failed marriages, later on in life, she chose to get involved in the Catholic ministry. She was a nun and specifically, she decided to choose prison ministry. The place that she decided to specifically serve was this place called La Mesa Prison, which was located in Tijuana, Mexico. Now, the truth about this prison is that it was a terrifying place to be. It was full of just the most dangerous criminals, whether it's murderers, drug dealers, it was a terrifying place. But the amazing thing about Mother Antonia Brenner is that she actually chose to live in the prison because she knew that Jesus had a heart for these criminals. Jesus had a heart for these people that most people didn't want to have time for. She knew that Jesus had a heart for these people that most people didn't want to associate with. So she lived in the prison, she had her own room there, and she got to know these prisoners. They came to love her so much and she came to love them and they called her mama. It was a term of endearment. They loved her so much. She always made sure that they got their needs met. She always took the time to listen, to talk with them, to treat them like human beings. And there was a beautiful relationship that was built between her and the inmates. Now there was this one day where there was this horrible riot that broke out. Prisoners ended up with weapons and it just turned into absolute chaos. The military was outside of the prison not being sure what to do and everyone was too terrified to go inside the prison. Now, the thing about Mother Antonia Brenner, she was a bold woman. She was full of the love of Jesus. And she was arguing with them, saying, let me go inside, I'm not afraid. I can get them to stop this riot. And of course, everyone's terrified. Like, what's this little old lady gonna do? There's no way that she can stop these criminals from carrying out this crazy riot that was taking place. But she said, trust me, I can go in there, I can stop it. So eventually they let her inside the prison. So she went in there and she went directly to the cell of an inmate that she was really close with. His name was Blackie. And he was one of the inmates that was kind of one of the, the main gang members that was inside the prison. She went directly to his cell and she said to him, she's like, Blackie, you gotta stop this. You gotta make this riot stop. You gotta put your weapons away. You gotta make this chaos come to an end. Whatever it takes, whatever resources you guys need, whatever medicine you need, whatever it is, we'll make sure that you get it. But you guys gotta stop this violence. And the beautiful thing about this moment is that Blackie, he said to uh, Mother Antonia, he said, Mama, as soon as we heard your voice, we threw our weapons out the window. The thing that was amazing about this story is that from a place of love, the love that Jesus wanted to show through her and her relationships to these inmates. That's the love that stopped this chaos from taking place. And that's the beautiful picture of the gospel. That's the beautiful picture that we have about Jesus himself. When it comes to the evil in the world, when it comes to this world that's full of sin and brokenness, Jesus decided to confront it with love. He decided to confront it with relationship. Jesus spent time with people that most people did not want to spend time with. And the thing for us that we have to remember for us today is that we are being called to the exact same thing. We are called to love humanity, all of broken humanity. From a place of us understanding the forgiveness and grace and love of Jesus in our lives, that's what drives us to love those who are maybe hard to love. Maybe love those who maybe see the world different than us, that speak different than us, that maybe look different than us. So the question that I have for us is, who do we have in our circle? What relationships do we have in our life that include people that maybe look different than us, that believe different things than us, that don't know Jesus, maybe people that are a little bit harder to love. So I really wanna challenge us, what are some practical ways that we can live that out this week? Who is someone that we can reach out to in our life that maybe we wouldn't normally spend time with? Someone we wouldn't normally hang out with? Maybe someone that doesn't know Jesus yet? What can we do this week to maybe reach out to one person to show them the love that Jesus has for them? It's been so great connecting with you guys. We'll talk again next week. See you guys soon.
Come on in, that was a word, that was so great. Man, there's so much that we can take from that text that he just preached about and now apply it to our lives. We are all in need of Jesus. So let's take some time right now, look at those discussion questions, write them down and let's discuss right now. You guys, next week, week three of it, don't get it twisted. I feel like I have to dance to that because it's just so fun. Don't get it twisted. Week three, you better be there. Thanks for joining us today. We love you and we'll see you next week.